Formula One engines are just incredible. Let me explain. This is a 1.6 litre turbocharger engine from a Ford Fiesta ST, and it produces a maximum of 197 horsepower. And this is a 1.6 litre turbocharged engine from a Formula One car, and it produces over 1,000 horsepower. But what makes them so different? Well, to start, the F1 engine costs 2,000 times more at around $10 million. So why exactly do they cost so much? Before we get into the crazy numbers of F1, let's get an idea of what a normal engine is capable of. We're going to look at the four-cylinder 1.6 litre EcoBoost engine from Ford, which you find in their Fiesta ST. I've been lucky enough to drive one of these little cars on track before, and they are incredible fun. ST means sports technologies, so not technically your average engine, but anyway. Yes, it's the same capacity and uses the same fundamental process to produce power, but that's where the similarities end for these engines. This Ford engine is cheap to produce at around only $6,000 and is made to run for 200,000 miles without having to go under the bonnet too often. It's fuel efficient, easy to service and should be ready to start at a moment's notice. But it's no race car. So what sort of power does this absolute monster in the standard Ford Fiesta ST have? Well, it produces 197 horsepower, revs to a maximum of 6,000 RPM and weighs about 100 kilos. And that's pretty good for a little road car engine. Now, let's see what the F1 engine can do. As you can expect, this is where the numbers really take off. Like I mentioned before, an F1 engine produces around 1,000 horsepower. It also revs to a maximum of 15,000 RPM, and that's only because it's capped at that level. The engines of the 2000s would get up to about 19,000 RPM and sound like this. I do really miss that sound. But anyway, back to the current crop of engines. They do weigh a little bit more than your standard road engine at 145 kilos, but that includes the electric motor, the MGUK, and all the hybrid components. These numbers are obviously very impressive, but they aren't 2,000 times better than what you would find in the Ford Fiesta. So why do they cost 2,000 times more? Well, before we get into the technical details, how did we arrive at that $10 million number? Well, it's reported that to buy a three engine supply from the manufacturer, like all the teams need to, apart from Red Bull, Ferrari, and Mercedes, it will cost them $16 million a year. Now, I hear you saying, Scott, you said they cost $10 million and that's $16 million for three, and that really doesn't make sense, but it's because they're being bought and not made. It's believed that the manufacturers spend more than 10 times that every year to research, develop, review, and produce the 100 or so engines needed by all the teams for a single season. This is compared to the hundreds of thousands of engines that are produced for road cars every single year at a fraction of the price. But what really makes these engines so expensive to produce? Well, first, let's look at the weight. F1 engines are some of the lightest out there despite the massive demands put on them. And you would think that these lightweight materials would be expensive, but you might be surprised. F1 engines actually use quite simple materials for the most part. The steel F1 engines used for the crankshaft was also used in the Spitfire engines during World War II. So not exactly modern and all that high tech. However, that's because the dreaded FIA banned loads of these cool materials that they used to use. But that's for another video. But it's the pressure that these materials are constantly under that makes them special. The demands that these engines have to cope with are enormous. While a road car will rarely rev above 4,000 RPM, a Formula One engine will tick over at 4,000 RPM. Imagine holding your car at 4,000 revs while sat on your driveway. It's not gonna go too well for you. But for an F1 car, this is their idle state. I mentioned the horsepower and the RPM that these engines work at, but it's in the smaller details where the real big numbers come. When running, an F1 engine can bust 200 times for every blink of an eye, which works out to be just over 58 million ignitions over its seven race lifespan. Just one combustion error out of those 58 million could cause a terminal engine failure. And the mind-blowing stats don't stop there. At the time of combustion, the instantaneous gas temperature can reach 2,600 degrees Celsius, which is half as hot as the surface of the sun. And at the same exact time, the gas pressure forces acting on the engine's six pistons is equivalent to the weight of four elephants. These extreme pressures and the fact that they have to last for seven races mean that these engines have to be super reliable. Reliability doesn't just mean not braking, it also means not losing too much performance. These current engines will only lose about 10 horsepower throughout their lifespan. And that's thousands 
thousands of kilometers at 100% capability. And in the high pressure world of F1, a fall in performance could cost teams tens of millions of dollars. And here's an example. These F1 engines can rev to a maximum of 15,000 RPM. And that means that the piston is traveling at around 80 miles per hour in the middle of its stroke. That's 80 miles an hour inside an engine, which means at the top and bottom of the stroke, the piston is accelerating from 80 miles an hour in one direction to 80 miles an hour in the other. So the pistons and the other components have to be strong enough not to rip themselves apart. And it's this reliance on reliability where the expensive part really starts. It's the tolerances of these engines and the detailed engineering that comes with them. So what exactly do we mean when we talk about tolerances? Now, when I say tolerances, we're talking about this in two ways. First of all is how small can these parts be made in terms of things like you know, the piston, the conrod, the crankshaft, how small, how, what tolerance can we get to where we're literally at the minimum size of bearing and uh, load bearing surfaces that you can possibly get away with given the thousand horsepower that this engine will you know, transmit during a race over you know, 70 laps. So you've got that, but then you've also got the other tolerances is how accurately are all of these parts machines relative to each other? How many microns you know, are they actually sure that the diameter of a part is at? And this is really where the complexity and the huge cost of Formula One engines comes in because every part will be made to the finest possible of tolerances. This complexity and the minute gaps between parts means that the engines can't actually be started when cold. As when they're cold, the parts are actually ceased together. Only fresh warm oil and coolant being run through the engine will warm the components and bring them up to the correct size. Only then can the engine be started. This precision means that every part will be produced and checked individually with incredible quality control. It seems like F1 teams don't have a limit when it comes to detail. Just listen to this. We know that all the pistons and the rods will be weight matched, all of this sort of stuff that is, you know, a standard part of good engine building for any type of performance engine. But it goes so much further with Formula One. So obviously we know exactly which piston is going into which bore and that will all be recorded and it goes even further for every bolt and stud that gets tightened up on the crankshaft on the cylinder heads in every area you need to have that torque down to a particular torque level and a particular stretch so that's really important and again it's a standard part of building an engine in formula one they go that little stage further so what you will have is special um torque wrenches torque guns and these will measure both the rotation to get the, the stretch and the torque applied to each bolt and it will record that so it will know every start what operation was done in order to tighten each of those fasteners up and that will stay as part of the history of that engine should there be a failure of that engine say for example a big end fails and we think that you know maybe one of the studs has failed they can go back and look at who when at what temperature uh, how many turns and how, how much torque was each of those studs uh, pulled down and that shows you just the level of detail that goes into each of these engines. This level of detail is where the expense comes. It's the sheer amount of people, manufacturing and evaluation behind each individually made component that makes these engines so expensive. All of the teams know that any failure will likely end their race causing them to lose points and so prize money at the end of the year. These engines are expensive because the cost of them failing is even larger and the teams don't want to take any chances. So there's no expense spared. So there's no normal outro for this video. This one is for Ken Block. Mm -hmm.